Well, you just ran into him. Good morning. This is Scott with Second and Nine Canine Life Coaching. We just got here. Here's one thing I really want to watch for. Rebecca Hudson, or I think that's who it was, mentioned getting out to take dogs out on their own enriching hikes. Hunter's over there going poo, way over there. He had to go that bad. Somewhere over there you can see butt movements right there. Right there. Thank you, Wiley. So she mentioned getting dogs out into the country and going out away to go potty. Hunter's been really good this last week, last two weeks because of we had the coyote incident. But yesterday he got to go out to his property, which he hasn't done in like two weeks. And he got to, uh, no, he's really got to go poo. That was an emergency poo this morning. I'm sorry, I lost him. There he is, right in the center. That's poo number two right there. I see you, Hunter. Sometimes I feel like somebody's watching me. So I think the advantage of going out when you go, I can actually apply all this to effective neuroscience and social neuroscience because when you're out, on your own property and you're out running around being free with no stresses, guess what? You feel better. Your dog feels better. You're able to reward for the good things you want and a lot of those good things are what we call life rewards. Running around, being free, because you trust them more. When you're stressed at home and on the walks, your dog's gonna be more stressed. So that's all effective in social neuroscience right there. That's mostly social neuroscience as far as bonding. Good job. Affected our social neuroscience as far as bonding and actually feeding off of each other. Effective neuroscience is also when you hug somebody and you can lower their blood pressure and you can lower their um, heart rate. You release oxytocins and then they release oxytocins. Oh, there's the ball from Max. That's effective neuroscience. Social neuroscience is how you guys bond how you guys bond, where in the brain you guys bond. Effective neuroscience shows that the motions where they cut pretty much stem from. And then neurobiology, neuros, neurobiology and neurophysiology, all this stuff goes and applies as well. Are you gonna wiggle your butt? That's a new trick. No barking, please. Thank you, good, no bark. Thank you, thank you. So we understand how the animals actually, go ahead, go play, go play. They seek you out using effective neuroscience, using the seeking system to seek you out to actually want comfort and play. That's creating a bond. Every time your dog plays with you or they play, and I mean like play as in their game, like how I chase these guys or I let them go do their own thing and they interact with me, that's effective neuroscience and social neuroscience at play. That's them actually choosing to, to want to play with me. Once the dogs feel happy, they want to be social. Taking things away from depression and loneliness. We are social creatures. So back to my story about Rebecca. I'm sorry, I probably got the wrong person, but it was about taking your dog out on walks and adventures versus city walks. I don't have a problem with that. And I think one thing, back to my story, is one thing that helped Hunter, we'll see if it helped Hunter, is the fact that he got to go out to his property with his dad and go run free and be his own thing. He gets to do that here, don't get me wrong, and look, we're out in the woods. But of course I still have my rules. Wiley. Wah. He still has to interact with everybody up here. Hunter loves his people, and if you really think about it, minus puppies that are born with breeders, you know, real breeders that breed and have multiple dogs at their house. They're raised by humans. They've been raised with humans for 14,000 years. So I think human rules, epigenetics, plays a bigger part for dogs than them actually socializing with each other. Because if you really watch how every single one of these dogs play, they really focus on me. Yes, I have their treats and their motivation. Go ahead, Wiley. Oh, you missed. Where'd it go? Up here. Wiley, over here. See how he wants to listen to find it? 
There you go. That's problem solving. Hunter, where's your ball? Thank you, Hunter. Checking in. Go get your ball. Wiley, where's yours? There it is. And Wiley, or Hunter, Barney doesn't care about a ball. I could change your name to whatever I want it to be. Bell, leave it alone. I don't know what you found, but leave it alone, please. Um, finish what you're eating. Dirt nose. I don't know what it is. And then whatever's over here I don't like, but kind of SOL on that one. I missed out on that. Should have been paying more attention to my noisy one that was pretty quiet. My 13-year-old dog. Thank you, Bell. Thank you, Wiley. Where's your ball? Go ahead. So even when you have behavioral issues, Trish McMillan discusses how when you get dogs to be more social and they actually want to play in shelters, and this is all shelters, most of the behavioral issues go away that were in shelters. Rah, I scared you. Rah, rah, where's your ball? I don't believe you. So even though they can play with everybody else here, they play with me and interact with everybody else. Oh boy, Wiley. They will find a way to get my attention, whether it's through the treats or through the ball, to get my attention. Then I get my other ones that will come in, only come in to get my attention to play or treats. Thank you, Wiley. Good boy. But what I teach them is that they can rely on me no matter what to get their needs met. Linda Michaels' hierarchy of dogs' needs. Through that, I've been able to apply effective and social neuroscience. Yes, the dogs are getting treats for pretty much nothing but checking in. <laughs> but if it puts them in a good mood, get out of here, get out of here, get out of here, get out of here. Yak Panskep has proven that when you play with a dog or you play with rats and you play their game that makes them actually want to trust you and bond with you, that puts them in a more joyous mode. <laughs> joyous mood. And they'll actually want to learn through play comes cognitive function, function and problem solving. Through problem solving, through play, with play, the dogs learn to solve problems when they're in a good mood as opposed to being happy. So Bell's gonna, so these guys are having fun interacting with me, they get annoyed by Bell, they move away, I reward for that. So I can put behaviorism and B-Mod in with my effective neuroscience. Him over here being by himself, I'm sure he's pretty tired from running on 200 acres. Hunter, and to help with effective neuroscience when I'm in a group, everybody stop. Hunter, thank you. That's yours, here. And I use comfort. Good boy. Yeah, good boy. Everybody else stopped? Thank you. All right, I'll be back. You get your ball? Go ahead, everybody out. Ready, Wiley? Whoa. Thank you, Barney. See how they leave Hunter? Now look at Hunter, he's a little more curious and aware of what's going on around him. Did you find it, Hunter? Thank you, Barney. You can see how everybody else interacts instead of being so focused on him. So just because he's chewing, you gotta watch his eyes and his ears and his tail and the rest of his body language. See how he turns slightly towards us? Thank you, Barney. Bell. Thank you, Bell. This is why training your dog when they're in a good mood, as opposed to being punishing them or when they're upset. Ready, Bell? Whoa. Go get it, go get the ball. Belle loves to interact. Good, leave it, Belle. Thank you. Last one, Wiley. Good job, Wiley. Thank you, Barney Cuddle. Oh, thank you. What? What do you know? Oh. Thank you, see, he ran into her. He's really nervous. See what she does? She took it out on me, barked at me and then was willing to play with him, let him know that she still wants to play because she's always doing the annoying barking. Good, no bark. And Barney left her alone. That's all problem solving in the, in the moment. Thank you, that's it, we're done. That's it, let's go potty real quick. 
So dogs are very social animals. Every mammal is a very social mammal because they rely on people or they rely on each other to grow up. If they rely on each other to grow up and dogs are natural problem solvers by seeking out humans for help. There's an experiment, the dogs can't open a jar. They try to do an experiment with wolves cooperating with each other to open up something. Dogs that can't do it, they know they can't do it. They turn around and bark at the humans. For a while, for 10 years, they thought dogs were stupid. But re modern research has gone back and looked at that and said, oh, wait a minute. They are problem solving. They're asking for help. They're asking for help with humans. So if they're asking for help with humans, why wouldn't they ask for help when they're reactive or they need something else? Even if it's just a, oh, dogs are greedy, they just want food. Thank you, Belle. Did you find it? Have you found a stick? See how Hunter's coming to join us a little bit? This is all social and effective neuroscience. Helping the emotions be fun or more joyous by using care, play, and seeking. He's seeking now. Even though it's the obvious seeking, their brain is always seeking rewards. Escape can be a reward. Chewing on something else because you're too nervous or you need to de-stress. Playing out of stressful situations. Avoiding stress. Being nervous and avoiding stress. That's still avoiding stress. That's still seeking rewards. We just see the behavior of them looking upset and assume that's going to be stress. And we accidentally focus on that as opposed to them walking away from it. Or playing which an animal will not play if they don't feel safe. So if your dog can dig and roll and everything else around you while there's a stressful situation, that's them saying, I'm not comfortable, but I got to get rid of this. The brain naturally does that. The brain naturally says, there's stress. I sought safety. Now I need to release those stress chemicals somehow. They don't just hold on to it. That experiment where you need three days to, de to decompress, that's for people that did absolutely nothing no play, no reducing stress. Thank you guys. See so who didn't join me? My most friendly dog didn't join me. Thank you. See how I can give out treats independently? Cuddle, cuddle. Oh, you wanna cuddle? Sorry, Belle. Thank you, Belle. Thank you. No more cookies. Hunter, cuddle. Yeah. Wiley, you want to cuddle? Yeah, tail wag. You want me to come to you? Thank you. Oh, see, he meets me halfway. Once he knows that I'm going to help him, he wants to. He wants to come get it. He was seeking me out by doing what Hunter does, mimicry. All different ways dogs learn, right? He saw Hunter chewing on stuff and learned that I got. I gave Hunter attention when he walked away. So Wiley went over there. And I said, let's cuddle. He wags his tail. That's an invitation. That's consent. That's permission. Then when he comes over, hold on, Wiley, Barney. Wiley. Come here. Good boy. And see how he gets a little... Hunter, stop. See how he gets a little bit more excited when I, when I'm, after we comfort? The feel-good chemicals are being released. Good boy. Are you ready? Thank you. Barney de-stressing so he can get some more attention. Because Barney wants to play. Right, go get your butt. Get your butt. I get your butt. Good boy, Wiley. See how he avoids Bell trying to play with him? This is all because we're on a play mood, Wiley. Barney. Thank you, Barney. Bell, you brat. So cookie hungry. Thank you, Hunter. All right, last one. Ready? Ready? Let's go play. Let's go potty. Uh... I need to find the tennis balls. I'm so running low on those. So the whole point of my thing is everything works together. Behaviorism, behaviors, effective neuroscience with the effect of emotions on how behaviors are. Social neuroscience, how emotions affect behavior and how they actually affect social, wanting to be social. Belle, leave it alone, please. Thank you, good, leave it. How they actually want to be social. Thank you, Hunter, you found it. That wasn't the right one, but that was the extra one. Thank you. I think the other one's down here. So everything works together to help form a relationship between me, Belle, which is my dog, Barney, which I walk, Hunt, Wiley, which I walk, Hunter, which I walk. So they can actually want to hang around me instead of finding all these other stressors. 
I find ways that they feel safe to express themselves so we can all get along and just have fun. And Because after you play, you can work through triggers a lot easier. Because the, dog, the brain is actually joyous and the, the reward centers are lighting up. Because, because through play, you get cognitive function improvement, you get resilience and empowerment, your dog feels better, the body has released chemicals to make everything feel better, they don't feel stressed and tied down or like they can't escape, and they will escape. It's just not running away. Thank you, thank you. Ready, Wiley? Thank you, Hunter. Ready? Wiley, come here. Thank you, Wiley. Good job. All right, let's go home. Let's go get water. This is Scott with Second and No One Canine Life Coaching. Talk about how we can actually help dogs, or actually how everything works together. Interspecies relationships. And there's another word I learned. I just can never remember what it is. This is why I can't be a doctor, because I don't remember technical words. And trust me, I study them constantly. Inter... Whatever. Anyways, helping relationships between dogs and humans. Through neurobiology, effective, neuro, uh, effective neuroscience. Hunter, thank you. Social neuroscience and behaviorism. Have a great day.